started the recording and uh, okay <coughs> the recording of this lecture is on all right so let's look at the questions in the chat there's a question from john paul um so in first john chapter 5 verse 14 does this mean <coughs> everything we ask god every time should be aligned with god's will or we can pray for everything as we are in Christ. Now this is a confidence that we have in him, that he has us, that we ask anything according to his will here, that he hears us. Okay. So um, the answer to the question, <coughs> sorry, the answer to the question is this. Of course, whatever we ask has to be <coughs> in line with the will of God in line with the will of God. That's First John 5, 14. But when we are in Christ, and this is in John 15, verse 1 through 7. And if you look at verse 7, Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you ask what you will. And it will be done for you. So he said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask whatever you will. So the first part of the verse is very important. You know, he says, you abide in me and my words abide in you. So when we are abiding in him, his words abiding in us, we are not going to ask anything that's contrary to the will of God. I mean, we are not even going to be thinking about those kinds of things, because we're abiding in Christ, his words abiding in us. So that's why he can tell us, ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. So the answer to the question is yes, we have to ask according to the will of God, because in James chapter 4, <clears throat> James is rebuking the uh, the believers there, he says, you know, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lusts. That is in James chapter 4 and verse 3. Okay? So here the, 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 these people were asking wrong. Why? They were asking to you know, just satisfy their own pleasures, asking wrong. So he says, you ask and you do not receive. Why? Because you're asking wrong. But the, the precondition or the prerequisite to answer prayer is, you abide in me, my words abide in you, you ask what you will, it will be done. So one of the things, I, I, I want us to think about this. I want us to think about this. Jesus never had an unanswered prayer. Jesus never had an unanswered prayer. And then he said, you pray uh, in my name. When we pray in the name of Jesus, it's as good as Jesus doing the praying. That's what it means. To use the name of Jesus means we are standing in his place, acting in his behalf to do what he would do. So whenever we pray in Jesus' name, that's what we're doing. It's as good as Jesus praying. So technically, as a believer, we should never have an unanswered prayer. Technically, I'm just saying. Every prayer of ours can be, answer, can be answered. But the precondition is you abide like Jesus. You know, well, Jesus was perfectly aligned to the Father. So every time he prayed, it was, it was answered. So we also, if we abide in him, his word abide in us, when we pray in the name of Jesus, every prayer we pray will be answered. And that's the confidence with which we must pray. That's why it says, this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to us, well, he hears us. And because he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. That means, you know, this is like a wonderful place to be that I pray and I know I answer, get it. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm asking always according to his will. It's done. So to answer your question, John, yes, we have to ask according to his will. But 
if we put ourselves in a place where we are completely aligned to his will, then every prayer we pray will be answered. And that's the place we are supposed to be. And that's where Jesus wants us to be. Okay? Is that okay? Yes, okay. Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we pick up uh, this question from Nicholson. It was a question we, you know, it was came in the last class. We didn't have time to answer. So we'll just pick it up now before we uh, move forward. So last week, Nicholson had asked, uh, uh, can I walk up to any person randomly and pray for healing if they allow me to, or do I wait for a leading by the Holy Spirit every time? So the answer to it is both, you know, is both. Uh, one, of course, when the Lord leads you, you know what to do. You just stay with it. You just act on it. The Lord may prompt you, you know, go to this person, call this person, etc. So you do that. The other thing is, we have been commissioned to go. Right? Jesus said, go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every person. So we've been commissioned to go. Now, obviously, we don't just randomly stop every person on the street because, you know, we have, everybody's busy and doing things. But there are, you know, opportunities and just maybe you're out on the street or you're, 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 you run into somebody somewhere or it could be in a restaurant, it could be in the mall, it could be in the parking lot, it could be wherever you're moving around, you may run into somebody and uh, there's absolutely no problem. In just like sharing the gospel, right? Uh, if you get an opportunity, you're going to share. You're not necessarily going to wait for a leading from the Lord to share the gospel. You're just going to share. And as part of sharing the gospel, you would also say, hey, can I pray for you if you have a need? So that's perfectly fine. That uh, you, can, you can talk to anybody as the opportunity arises and uh, share Jesus with them. And then you say, you know, if they have a need, say, hey, can I pray for any need you have? Uh, maybe it could be a healing, it could be a provision, it could be anything. You know? And then you go ahead and minister to them. So, so the answer to your question, Nicholson, is uh, both. You know, We are, of course, open to the leading of the Lord. Anytime he leads us, we go. But we're also op open to opportunities. Right? Uh, sometimes we can create these opportunities when we find somebody, you know, just maybe they're just sitting there uh, 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 in a, at a restaurant table all by themselves, and then you happen to start a conversation with them. Or, you know, so we can create those opportunities or, and, uh, and, and then share the gospel and pray for them if they have needs. But of course, there is a practical side, meaning if you're on a street and there are, you know, 30, 40 people, it's not going to be possible to talk to all 30, 40, but uh, maybe there may be one person that you could say hello and start up a conversation and then uh, just talk to them. And it could mean, it could mean, any, it could mean the world to them that moment. So, you know, we just move in both ways and let trust that God will orchestrate things for us. Thank yeah. you, Pastor. I hope that answers. All right, um, everyone is with us together. Any questions, any other questions before we continue? Okay. Devia has a question. Uh, yes, go ahead, Devia. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, looking at this uh, reference. Uh, so Jesus is saying that he does what he sees uh, the Father do. So uh, when we talk about that uh, abiding, uh, in John 15, like, uh, uh, do I get to that level of, you know, understanding like, oh, the Father wants me to do this or uh, how does it work? But for Jesus, it was uh, very clear, right, about what God's will is. Yeah, mm. yeah I was just trying to understand this. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Think about the word relationship, relationship. And out of relationship or in relationship, let me say this, in relationship, you just move spontaneously. So that's all it is. 
that's that's all it is about abiding in him and he in us it's relationship and in the context of relationship you just move spontaneously so let's give let's put it in like this example okay think about a husband wife relationship okay let's say a husband wife they're married they have a relationship let's say they have a you know they have a very loving good relationship uh, the husband gets up and he just, you know, he starts doing certain things, maybe in the house. He's not going to go to the wife every moment and say, hey, should I do this or should I do that or should I do that? No, he just does what he knows. He knows his wife. Uh, he knows what she likes. Uh, and so he just spontaneously goes about doing the things that please her. Similarly, the wife knows the husband. She doesn't have to ask all the time. Oh, do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want like, no, no. just spontaneously. They just, she just does what she knows a husband likes. Now, there may be something, uh, they may have a conversation. I mean, there may be something that my phone, you know, this morning for breakfast, do you want, you know, toast and egg or do you want uh, cereal and milk or whatever, you know, just, or maybe the wife just knows, you know, my husband likes cereal, milk and cereal every morning, whatever. So just spontaneous. Sometimes she may need to clarify something. But same thing, husband, wife. So what I'm trying to say is there is a relationship. And in that relationship, you just move spontaneously based on what you know pleases the heart of the person. So that's that's all there is, you know. That you know God, you know God is your father. And, you know, as you read his word, as you pray, we are growing in this relationship. And then we move spontaneously in that relationship because we know his heart. Now, as part of that relationship, there may be specific instructions that he will speak to you by his spirit saying, okay, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And that's, that comes through the relationship. So it's not that everything comes as a direction, you know, uh, Ashish, get up this morning, drink your cup of tea, or, you know, <laughs> do this and do that. No, some things you just do spontaneously because you know what pleases the heart of God. But in, as you're spontaneous moving about in that relationship, knowing his heart, he also speaks. He speaks specific instructions. He, you know, he speaks specific things to your heart. So abiding in him and his word abiding in us is, 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 is uh, descriptive of that relationship we have. And uh, there is the spontaneity that's happening all the time. And then there is also specific words that he speaks to us on what he wants us to do. Does thank that help? Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, Pastor, thank you so much, yes. Okay, okay. All right, now we have another question here from Sitkino. Some say if you want to do ministry of God, you be strong in hope. Some people say be strong in faith, which is more, which one is more important? Now remember when we, uh, uh, okay, so Sitkino's question is, which is more important, faith or hope? The answer to the question is we need both, right? As long as we are on this earth, three things, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, now remains these three, faith, hope, and love. After we die, you don't need faith and hope, only love remains. But until we are on this earth, we need these three, faith, hope, and love. Okay? Now, Faith and hope are equally important. Why? Because you cannot have faith without hope. We learned from Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So hope is like the forerunner. It's like a pace setter. It's like, I would like to have it. I want to have it. So hope is saying, I want it. I want it. I desire for this. So hope is like desire. 
it hope is what pulls faith out of our hearts. So we must have hope. We must envision some desired outcome. So in the ministry, you, you, you need to have that desire to serve God or serve people or whatever, you know, whatever God's called you to do. You're envisioning it. That's your hope. It's something out in the future. But then faith saying, okay, I'm going to walk this walk to get there, right? So to answer your question, all three are needed, faith, hope, and love, as long as we are on this earth. So hope, faith and hope work together. Hope is the forerunner. It's a pace setter. And it pulls faith out of our hearts. So we need both hope and faith. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Um, if there are no more questions, we're going to continue. Are we going to go back to our uh, lecture notes? And we're going to continue with that. So let me just share that on my screen. Okay, so um, this is where we were. I don't know if somebody, did somebody ask a question? Um, Shani, okay, go ahead. Shani, your question, please. Oh, hi, yes. I just have a question. I know that in the Bible it says, um, things that I do, you can you do great things in me because I go to the Father. And I also know that you just spoke to the fig tree. So I know you said you can use your faith for now. So my thing is that Jesus spoke to the fig tree the next day it was, um, you know, whether, so if you're believing for a house and you want to pay for your house in cash, and you don't have the money for it. Can you use your faith to go to a house that you want to that's for sale and speak to it and then expect it? Just like Jesus spoke to the fig tree, expect for the money to come right away. I don't know if that, does that yeah. make sense? Yes, yes, I understand the question. So um, the way I would look at it is, um, you know, let's say, okay, we want, you know, you want to buy a house. Um, um, just, you know, so there is a practical side, there's a spiritual side. So on the practical side, you know, it's important to just to know how God wants to work in your situation, right? There's no one set way uh, in how God wants to work. So uh, in your situation, how does God want to work? You know, for some people, you know, maybe they save up something and then they, they you know, make the down payment and they take a loan and they buy a house. Some people do that. Some people may uh, have all the money and they buy the house. So there's a practical side. So you just, you know, first thing I would do is, okay, God, how do you want to do it in my life? Like how, how do you, uh, I want a house. I want to have my own house. How do you want to do this for me? You know, try to understand God's heart. Okay. Once you understand that this is how God wants to work in your life, then use your faith to go about that to go about you know taking making that 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 taking that path to possessing your own house to owning your own house if the way god wants to work in your life is uh, you know hey just believe me and i will provide uh you decide on you know you start planning on which part of the place you know, where you want the house what kind of house it is so you start thinking about it, you start planning for the example, let's say, let's say I had no money, but I'm believing God as a God, I want to have my own house. And um, I take some scriptures, I start, you know, meditating on it. So that's the spiritual side, I start building up my faith. But on the practical side, I start thinking, you know, okay, God, just guide me, which is a place where I should be. Uh, so, okay, yeah, uh, this, this is the kind of house I want, maybe, you know, two bedrooms or whatever, and this is what I want. So I, I start praying over it, right? And then it's, okay, God, lead me. Where do you want me to go? Right, so step by step, I'm, I'm building my faith, and then I'm also doing the practical side. And uh, then this con converges, meaning whatever I'm doing practically, whatever I'm doing in faith comes together, and I can focus my faith on, okay, this is where I want God, this is what I want God to do for me, right? And God will 
bring it to pass. So the answer to your question is, uh, you know, uh, there's no set way in which God is going to work in each individual's life. You know, we, we have to find out how God wants to bring our that provision and just work with him. But believe the promises. I take God's the scripture, say, God, you know, here are some, here's the word, this is what you promised. You, you know, for example, in Isaiah 32, 18, he said, my people will live in peaceful habitations, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. So say, God, you said in your word that your people will live in a place like this. So this is what I want. God, I want you to provide for me a home that is a peaceful, secure, and a quiet place. I believe that. So you kind of just build your faith up, and then you also start working practically towards that direction. And then God will converge it. He'll bring it together so that, you you know, he will guide you to the right place where you can have uh, the right home. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then during the, in that process, you know, once you know the kind of house you want, then you begin to declare your faith, right? That I believe God will provide such and such a kind of a home. And God has this place for me. He will provide for me. And God will orchestrate that for you. Okay. Okay. So... Let's go now to uh, continuing here. So we emphasize, we spent a lot of time here on, on, on this one thing that faith is released through words spoken out of a believing heart, right? So we, we believe God, we believe his word, uh, let that word build faith in our hearts, but then what do you do with it? You know, you have faith in God. Okay, how are you going to get your faith out uh, to see something happen? Well, Jesus said, you've got to speak. And you speak to the circumstance. So for instance, if, if you believe in God for a house, right? And then once you build your faith up and you're also doing the practical things, but you begin to speak and say, I declare that God will provide for me a good house. Um, you know, and maybe whatever you you whatever you want about the house. I'm just making this up. You would say, you know, uh, uh, two bedrooms uh, and, you know, what, however you want to describe it. This is what I believe God will provide for me because, you know, you're building your faith. You're extending your faith for that provision and uh, have faith in God. And then you speak to the, speak, release those words. And don't doubt in your heart. Believe that what you're saying will be done. You will have whatever you say. You know, uh, uh, I remember, and I'm just sharing this uh, just as an example. Okay, just to encourage your heart. Uh, I remember when I was a college, you know, in my early days, I was still a college student. And uh, I used to, I, I just said, God, I want you to bless me in such a way that I will have thousands and thousands and thousands of, you know, rupees to give away to people. You know, I want you to bless me in such a way that I want to just bless others, that money will not be a problem for me. And it's not be an issue for me. And so I used to declare, now I was just a college student, but, and, I, I, and this was something I wanted in the future. You know, it wasn't right then, right there, but I just said, you know, God is, and I used to, keep saying it, declaring it. God is going to bless me so much that I will give away thousands and thousands to bless others. So I would just declare that because that's what I wanted. I wanted my, I wanted that to happen in my life uh, financially. Uh, that God bless me. Now, you know, being a college student that said those days, it seemed crazy to even uh, think like that. Uh, and but I said that's what I want in my future, and I began to declare. And you know, when I look back uh, over all these years, uh, that's literally what God has been doing. You know, um, uh, from the time we moved back to India, uh, uh, in so many different ways. Uh, one, uh, of course, you know, when I was running the business, we had uh, we would put money into the ministry and bless the work. And then later on, the, the ministry itself 
just the church, uh, it became such a blessing. Uh, we started giving out free books um, right from 2001 or 2002. Uh, we used to start printing books. So now it's almost uh, about 18, 19 years. Uh, we've been printing books and just sending books out all across India, you know, across the country. And uh, we've literally given out, uh, I don't know how, how many hundreds of thousands of, I don't know, we haven't kept count. The books have been going out all across the country. And as we give it out for free, the books that we do. Then, you know, uh, uh, recently, and I think what happened this year, earlier this year, and I think I shared the testimony of when we gave away, you know, uh, uh, over 3.7, so about 37 million uh, Indian rupees, uh, uh, just all of, to to support lots of people, help lots of people uh, across India. So through the church, we just kept giving uh, you know, more than thousand five hundred pastors and uh, so many other people. So I'm just standing and I'm just watching all this happen. Uh, it's not, and there is no sweat. I'm not sweating or I'm not having sleepless nights to raise all this money. It's just flowing. It's just flowing. And I'm just like a spectator of watching all this happen through the ministry that we could just give all this freely away to bless people. So, but I remember those days in college when in my times of prayer before God, and I would just declare by faith, saying, God, God is bringing me to this place where money will overflow from my pocket. And I will just give to bless thousands of people. Money will not be a problem for me. You know, I remember those days of uh, speaking that by faith and declaring that by faith. And over all these years, you know, I just, I'm like a spectator watching it happen. Uh, you know, uh, the books that are going out all across the country, the money that's going out to bless other lives. Uh, it's just happening, you know, right before my eyes. And uh, I'm not taking any credit for it. I'm just a spectator, but God is doing it uh, through, you know, all that's happening. I'm sharing that because, you know, uh, what Jesus taught us is so important <clears throat> and it's so real that you're speaking words of faith. You're releasing words of faith. And those words will come to pass. You just believe what he has said. Right? So. Uh, that was one aspect, you know, what that Jesus taught us. Faith is released through the words you speak out of a believing heart. Now, he also taught us how to release faith in prayer. So this is, <clears throat> so this is the second way or another way to release your faith in prayer, right? But there's a particular way he told us to re release faith in prayer. So we're going to look at it very carefully. Jesus taught us that faith is exercised in prayer by believing you have received when you pray. Right? So let's, re uh, let's uh, read these two scriptures. Could somebody read Matthew 21 and verse 22 for us, please? And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Could somebody also read for us uh, Mark eleven twenty four, please? Therefore, I say to you, Therefore, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> so, notice Jesus talking about prayer, and he's talking about believing in prayer. So, this is a second way or another way to release our faith. Right? That means, how can I make my faith uh, do something for me, right? In my life or in my situation, how can I make it do something? So he says, in prayer, in prayer. So this is the second way. Through prayer, I'm going to release faith. So the first one that we saw earlier was through words words you speak, what you say. Now we talk about prayer. 
And he says, whatever things. No, so in both places, whatever things. So there is no restriction here. It doesn't have to be only spiritual. Sometimes we think, you know, I can only go to God for spiritual things. True, we can go to God for spiritual things, but also for material things, for natural things, for everyday life things. You know, we all need uh, food, you know, I mean, whatever things, you know, to live this life. So whatever things, there's no limitation, there's no restriction. But he's given us instructions. You ask in prayer. So obviously, I'm talking to God now. I'm praying to the Father. I'm talking to God. I'm asking in prayer. About what? About whatever things. Whatever things I, I desire. Whatever things I want, I need in my life. I'm asking in prayer. But then he says, when, when you pray, when you pray, that means at the time you are making this request, at the time you are bringing this before the Father, and you pray, what must you do? Believe. Believe what? Believe that you receive them. Believe or have faith that you receive them. And you will have them. So notice this. I have to believe that I receive them before I actually have them. I have to believe that I receive them before I actually have them. I'm repeating this because this is how we're supposed to pray. What am I supposed to believe? I'm supposed to believe that I have received them before I have them. That means in my heart. My faith is the substance of things hoped for. So in my heart, I have received them. Through my believing, I have received them. So as far as my faith is concerned, as far as my believing is concerned, it is mine. It's in my hands. And then he says, you will have them. Notice he didn't say, believe that you may have them. He didn't say that. He didn't say, believe that you might get them. He didn't say that. He didn't say, believe that sometime in the future you will receive them. No. He said, believe that you receive them. In fact, the King James puts it, believe that you have received them. That means, in the spiritual, in my heart, it's already granted to me and it's in my possession. That's what we must believe. Believe that it is in your possession. then you will receive. So let me put it like this. We receive in the natural what we first have already received in the spiritual. I'll say it again. We receive in the natural what we first have already received in the spiritual. That means in your heart. You're believing. So I believe that I have received it. What does it mean? It means in your heart, you're settled. Say, God, I thank you. This is done. It's done. Now, like I mentioned in the earlier case about our saying, Sometimes it takes us a little bit of time to journey to this place where we believe that we have received. It may not happen the first time you pray. So what do you do? You continue until you come to this place. 
within your heart you believe that you have received it is done and then he said you will have them you believe that you have received believe that you have received that you received them spiritually god i thank you it's mine now it's done i'm settling it in my heart it's there because faith is the substance of what i hope for so this is what jesus told us and remember mark 11:24 is actually you know it's it's all connected to here yeah, mark 11 22 23 and 24 it's like one sequence of instructions about having faith in god now i've just in the notes i've just separated it out because this is do, having to deal with prayer but it's all connected to having faith in god i have faith in god and here's another way how you can release your faith in god when you pray whatever you are you know want to ask god about you believe that you have received it and it will be yours so how can i do that and we're going to you know we're going to um, a little later on one of the upcoming chapters uh, we're going to try to put together uh, you know a, a series of this is how you can you know go about exercising your faith I'm, we are just right now, uh, you know, touching on various things that Jesus taught us about faith. But I want to emphasize this part about praying. And this is how we are supposed to pray. When you pray, believe that you receive them. And I think also this is where many of us miss it in prayer. Because we pray. We ask for things. But we don't do this part of saying, God, I believe that right now I'm receiving it from you. We do pray, we do ask for things, but then it's like, okay, I've sent my request up I, and that's it. But he didn't say, just send your request up. He also said, believe that you receive it. So this is the part we have to engage in. Believe, this is how we exercise faith in prayer. We have faith that we received. And you will get it. It will come to you. So, like I said, there's nothing wrong in praying about the same thing multiple times you go back to God and say father so example let's say let's take an example I'm believing God for healing in my body I uh, I take a few scriptures on healing and I say father this is what you have promised in your word so how can I have faith in God well by having faith in his word so father I thank you that this is what you have promised in your word this is your promise Jesus himself took my sicknesses and bore all my diseases and by his wounds I have been healed. Thank you, Father. You know, then God, I thank you that you forgive all my sins and you healed me of all my diseases. Thank you, Father. So, when I pray, I believe I have received. So, Father, I thank you. It's mine. It's done. So I'm going back to him. But when I go back to him, I'm thanking him. Why? Because I believe that I received. It's done. It's done. I believe that I have received. So if I have received, what would you do? If you have received something from somebody, you would say thank you. So you thank him. Father, I thank you that this is mine. The healing is mine. My body is well. Because I believe I have received now, at that moment, when I'm thanking God, having prayed, my body may not yet feel good, or that symptom may still be in my body, the problem may still be in my body, but I'm believing that I have received based on His Word. What will happen? 
you will have. That means it's going to come out in the natural. But first, I believe that I received by faith. So I say, Father, I thank you. I received it. But my faith says, hey, it's my body still, you know, having pain, whatever. Father, I believe I received it because your word says, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Right? Or Father, I thank you, my need is met. Because your word says, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that you make all grace abound toward me, that I always having all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work. So you're believing that you're received and you're giving thanks to God. You're expressing your believing that you're received by thanking him. That's what you do when, you, when, some, when you've received something from somebody. Okay. One last point. Let's just see if we can touch this or touch on this uh, before we wrap up. So number eight. Jesus also taught us that a third way is to exercise faith is we must act upon it. So there are three ways Jesus taught us to release our faith. One, we must say it. Two, we pray it. And third, we act on it. We act on it. So quickly, some examples. You know, when they brought this paralytic to Jesus, the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. But then he told this man, rise, take up your bed, go to your house. Rise, take up your bed, go to your house. So he's telling him, start doing something. Rise, take up your bed. And he arose. So you can imagine, you know, the man is lying in his bed. Jesus, arise, take up your bed. So obviously he must have attempted to start doing something. You know, maybe try to move his hands or feet or whatever he could. And as he did so, the healing went through his body. Right? So for Jesus to tell a paralyzed man, rise, is uh, really out of place. I mean, you don't go tell a paralyzed man, get up. That's what he did. This man is paralyzed. He's lying in his bed. And Jesus is saying, get up. Make your bed. So what would this man do? He didn't turn around and say, hey, Lord Jesus, I'm paralyzed. I can't make my bed. No. All we know is he arose. That means he must have started doing something to get up off the bed. And as he started getting up, healing came through his body. So many examples like that, where we see Jesus telling people to act their faith. You know, Peter steps out of the boat to walk on the water. Jesus says, come. And Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Jesus, uh, Peter was acting on the word. He was acting his faith. He, was, he stepped out of the boat. He started walking. And as he stepped out, you can imagine, the miracle began to happen. He, be, he walked on the water. Right? So the miracle is happening as Peter came out of the boat. So that's an important thing. Right? Jesus teaches us to act on our faith. So before we close, let me just uh, pause here. Um, that uh, we uh, act our faith. We step out. We start walking. You know, acting our faith. And at that time, the miracle starts happening. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, oh, I just want to sum up. We have just a few more minutes. I want to sum up and then take questions. So, today, we were talking about what Jesus taught us about faith. Three important things how to release our faith. So, you have faith in your heart, which is a good thing. But that faith has to be expressed. It has to come out in order to do something. He gave us three things. First, you can say it. So you speak it out. Second, you can pray it. You exercise faith in prayer. 
third, you act it. You, you just start doing it. You start acting on it. And then it will happen. You know? So uh, when you start uh, just acting in line with what you believed, things will start happening. Right, so act in line, start doing some small things in line with what you believe. It may be some small steps, start doing it. As you start acting in line with what you believe, things will begin to take place, okay? So three simple things, but I want you to remember it because for the rest of our lives, how are we going to exercise our faith in God? Three ways. You say it, you pray it, you act it. And that's how you exercise faith. It's how Jesus taught us. Okay. Let me take quickly answer some questions. So Debbie says, can't we say that faith is that assurance of receiving? Yeah. Right? Faith is what is that assurance in your heart that you have received from God. It's done. Uh, the situations around may not have changed yet, but in your heart, you say it's done. I know it's done. And uh, soon, things around you will change and it will happen. But the assurance begins here in your heart that it's done. Okay? Uh, any other questions? I know we didn't do a whole lot, but I think we did three very important things. And uh, I just want you to keep it you know, in your heart. Any other questions? Okay. That's right. Say, pray, act. That's right. Jude 20, right? So in Jude, 20, Jude says, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Right? So uh, notice what he says. He says, build yourself up on your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So um, praying will help, definitely. But remember, Faith comes through the word of God, right? Praying will strengthen our inner man. Praying helps us build that intimacy with God, that relationship with God. But prayer without the word is not necessarily going to generate faith because faith is based on the word. So you're building up on your faith. So faith has been built established to the word now you're building up yourself on your faith building up yourselves on your most holy faith as you pray in the holy ghost so prayer builds you up your inner person up on your faith your faith is being built by the word through that relationship so to answer your question uh, roslyn from jude 20 definitely praying in tongues is very important and we must continue praying in tongues pray as much as you as we can in this in tongues uh, uh, but it, it's telling us to do it on top of our faith. You know, build yourself up on your faith. So faith is built as you hear the word of God. And praying in the spirit makes your spirit ready to receive the word, to be strengthened in the word, so on. Okay? It's, they're important, <clears throat> but, uh, and we need both. We need both. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. <clears throat> We're going to close in prayer and we'll wrap up for the day. And um, you know, we'll continue this next week. I'm taking it a little slow at this point because uh, uh, these are very simple things, but are very uh, important things for us. Okay. Good. Uh, I just want one person to please uh, close in prayer and then we will um, uh, dismiss who would like to pray. Um, I haven't heard uh, uh, Joash 
Joash, Jaira, D'Souza. Would you like to pray a prayer and dismiss us, Joash? Yeah, maybe Joash didn't hear me. Okay. Uh, Lyndon, do you want to pray? Okay, Jeffina, go ahead and pray. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful study about faith that we had. Lord, let us act our faith. Let us pray in faith and let us speak in faith and let everything that we learn, let us apply it in our life and live for you each and every second. We bless our pastor and we bless everyone in this class. Let us be faithful to you till the end and run this race with you and enjoy this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, enjoy your next hour. Next hour. See you soon. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. God bless each one. See you again.